fellow parents and educators. Thank you for joining me at Education Evolution, where we are disrupting the status quo in today's learning models. We talk about present day education, what's broken, who's fixing it, and how. I'm Dr. Maureen O'Shaughnessy, your host and founder of Education Evolution and the Microschool Coalition, where we are fiercely committed to changing the narrative, to reimagining the education landscape, and creating learning that serves all children and prepares them to thrive. Hello, listeners. Today I'm talking about one of my favorite subjects, micro schools. With parents clamoring to create face to face learning for their children, micro and even nano schools and their how to's are in demand. Since my Seattle school, Lead Prep, is the third micro school I've created, I thought I'd share some tips. More details and the full seven-step plan can be found in my book on creating microschools, which is listed in the show notes. Let's start with a quick introduction to microschools. I'm going to read this out of my book. Listening to the needs of children and prioritizing them is the heartbeat of student-centered, humane education. Just as a heartbeat pushes blood throughout the body, the drive for humane education pushes deep innovation throughout a micro school. The point is not to duplicate failing conventional school systems in miniature, but rather to create a new kind of learning community. And right now, we are looking for how we can get our kids face-to-face safely because we know how important it is to have social engagement. We also know that our parents that are working from home need to have a reprieve so they can do their day jobs and not just supervise and teach their kids. It's a paradigm, a way of looking at learning, not a specific model. Common features include small size, adaptability and responsiveness, personalized learning, multi-age classrooms, teachers as guides, not lecturers, resources and technology that directly benefit students, and an innovative holistic curriculum. So let's look at these three steps for starting our own micro school. Let's start with step one, your mission. You need to know your purpose, which is probably more than just face-to-face learning for your child. You have some goals, you know, some outcomes that you want for your child. So three questions that can help you refine your mission is what will it look like when a student is done with our program? If this is a half year program, will they be at grade level? Will they be happy? Will they have been engaged socially? If this is a program through graduation, what will a graduate look like? Will this person be ready to go off to college or to get a job? So what does your student look like at the end of this school? Second, who will you serve? Are you serving a certain age group, a certain geography, a certain kind of learner, kids that all want hands-on or that are all really kinesthetic learners, kids that are all willing to do Spanish immersion and really value that? Third, how will you serve them? Are you serving them with assignments that are set home? That's kind of what's happening in a lot of our public schools right now. Are you serving them face-to-face? Is it a hybrid model? Is it online learning? Is it supplemental PE and music and art, and then kids go back and do the reading and writing in their homes? So your three questions to refine your mission are, what will my student look like at the end of this school? Who will I serve and how will I serve them? The next step could be getting the word out or what makes your school unique. These two go back and forth. It's not a linear process. I am going to start with getting the word out, which is step four in my book. 
So there are lots of ways to say, hey guys, I'm starting a school. Do you want to team up with me? You know, you're going to want to get it out on social media. It, word of mouth is amazing. So you definitely want to get some interested people to shout it out as many places as possible. And you also want to be connecting with other groups. I'll put some links in my show notes just to give you some ideas of who's out there. Collaborate. I'm a part of a small school network in the Northwest and we share ideas all the time. And hey, we're looking for a math teacher. Hey, what are you guys going to do about face masks in the fall? You want to collaborate. We're all in this for the kids. It is not about competition. So once you have the word out, you're going to have folks that are joining your initiative and they're going to influence some of what your school's features will be, even though you already have a mission in mind. And you're definitely going to want to team up with at least one other person to divide the ideas, leadership, and operational tasks in a way that play to the strengths of each of you and also to your resources. Don't try to go this alone. There's plenty of work to be shared. The third step, which happens while you're also getting the word out, is my favorite step. Think about what makes your school unique. Look at your interests and resources. Do you want to focus on the environment and nature? To be learner-directed with a project-based approach? To hold your classes in Spanish or in American Sign Language? This goes back to your graduate profile. What do you want for the outcomes of students that are at your school? Dream and have fun with this. Now that you have your mission, folks who want to participate, and your unique features determined, and I'm sure you can be seeing that these three steps are not necessarily linear, that one will inform the other, there are five questions that need answering. One, what are the logistics of my school? Will will we be face-to-face in the morning, every other day? Will we have more than one location? Also, what will our safety and hygiene protocols be? Are we taking temperatures each morning? Social distancing? Wearing masks or shields? Hand washing at specific times throughout the day? Using isolation protocols if a student becomes ill? All of these considerations and more are in a very thorough plan that we have for our micro school to be opening face to face in the fall. And I'll put in the show notes, Oregon State has an amazing checklist that would really help you be thinking about the different safety implications. They have a blueprint that all their schools are required to turn in. So I'll make sure I share that with you because there's so many angles to be thinking about to really protect everybody and keep them safe. Logistically, what are we doing for meals, for recreation, for transportation to and from school? Kids need routine to feel secure now more than ever. Be very intentional with your logistics, with the goal being to not alter your routine for the first three or four weeks. Let's give these kids security. Let's really be proactive. Second question, what curriculum will I use? Our micro school, Lead Prep, doesn't use textbooks because we're project-based. We do have a sequential math program with hands-on activities for younger grades. There are so many directions you can go with curriculum. Please, please, please don't just do pencil and paper workbooks. Let's engage these kids. Let's engage their brains and not go for rote learning. I will put some curriculum resources in the show notes for you. Question three. This is really important. What are our norms? And can we create these with the students? Are there any non-negotiables? A simple place to start is something like respect of self, others, and space. And then you can unpack it in a class discussion with students role-playing various ways of living the norms or drawing pictures to illustrate your values and expectations. Keep the norms simple and help the students own them. Question four, what is the role of each family and of the school? Will each family pay or contribute a certain amount? Will families provide supplies? How will the school have a reporting process to share what is learned? 
How will the school communicate concerns or needs? As a sample, I have a link to our lead prep school student parent covenant in the show notes. We all sign the covenant before the start of the year so that roles and expectations are clear from the start. The fifth question, how will you measure your success? Look back to that profile. Did you want your students to grow in literacy and numeracy? To improve social skills? To have fun? I hope you say yes to that one. To take better care of the planet and each other. Reflect weekly and report out monthly on these measures. Also, use your reflection as a formative assessment to assess how you're doing and form your next steps to continue or redirect or whatever you need to do to fully serve each of your wonderful students. There. Now you have three steps and five questions to guide your work. While my consulting is usually with existing schools wanting to add a school within a school or with folks interested in starting a permanent micro school, I'm happy to consult with you. Getting off to a great start with your school is important. I can help. One final note. This pandemic and time of waking up to inequality is an opportunity to rethink our institutions and make sure all are being served and have equal access. As you dream about a short-term solution for the fall, let me give you our education evolution magic wand. What would you dream if you could transform education to serve all of our kids? How would you change schools so that each student is seen, heard, valued, and thriving? Preschool through high school graduation. Our public institutions are woefully behind private industries, but you're seeing your power to be a force for change for our precious children. Please don't stop when the pandemic ends. Let's use this time as a springboard to transform the landscape of education to help all of our children become capable, happy, contributing young adults. The education evolution needs you. Thank you for joining me today. If you're finding yourself thinking, I need to do this in my school, let's talk about it. Earlier this year, I got to present models for diverse learners for the South American Inclusion School of 2020 conference. There are many ways to enhance the holistic support of our learners. Let's create an action plan together. Visit educationevolution.org backslash consult to book a call and let's get started. Education Evolution listeners, you are the ones to ensure we create classrooms where each student is seen, heard, valued, and thriving. We need you. Let's go out and reach every student today. Leaving a rating and review for this podcast lets others know that you find it of value and gets it in the earbuds of more educational leaders like you. Thank you for listening. Signing off, I am Maureen O'Shaughnessy, your partner in boldly reimagining education.